So I'm going to be talking about uh, building a team, a multidisciplinary team. We, it's something that we talk a lot about, and I'm going to hopefully give you a few practical points in terms of how we did it in our institution. So I'm going to first talk about the rationale for why we need a multidisciplinary CLI team. And then obviously, as you can imagine, there are a number of challenges to creating the team. And then hopefully give you some practical ideas about how to begin collaborating and some keys to success to keep the program going. So I'm going to start off with a very typical patient, uh, which I think illustrates and highlights the need for a team approach. So this was a 76-year-old male smoker with insulin-dependent diabetes, all the usual and typical risk factors, of course, who presented with rest pain and ulcers to the left hallux and third toe with the flat ABI. And not surprisingly, he progressed over a very short period of time to frank gangrene and cellulitis, and he was admitted for IV antibiotics and was seen by our ID and podiatry folks, two of the valuable uh, members of our team. And you can see on the angiogram, again, he had uh, multi-segment disease with a critical left external iliac artery lesion that we stented, and then a very long SFA lesion. And in addition to that, an, an inclusion of the anterior tibial artery and uh, sequential lesions in the TP trunk and PT. So we dutifully crossed this uh, with, with the crosser once we were confirmed intraluminal, ballooned, and stented this to uh, restore inflow to the popliteal level. And then uh, this was actually the first patient that we treated in the uh, Lutonics Below the Knee uh, CLI trial, and he was randomized to um, uh, DCB, which was treated with a 3-0 DCB with very nice angiographic result. But more importantly, uh, after our podiatry colleagues took him to the OR to remove those areas of gangrene, he was able to, six weeks later, have successful healing of his wounds and successful limb salvage. So there's no question that CLI teams save lives and limbs. We have to uh, acknowledge the fact that amputation is incredibly costly, not only in terms of the psychological damage to patients and their families and the economic costs are really staggering, $10.6 billion annually. We know that revascularization is more cost effective than amputation, and these team-based models have demonstrated efficacy at reducing amputations and several centers have reported major reductions in their amputation rates by over 72% after instituting a formal care process by getting together and working together as a team. So uh, it takes a village, and, and that's certainly uh, true in CLI. There are a lot of physicians and other folks who are incredibly important in taking care of these folks. So we have the various uh, phys physician disciplines, vascular medicine, surgery, endovascular, but we also have our colleagues in the wound care center, our podiatrists are really front and center in the trenches here, plastic surgery, our non-invasive uh, non colleagues in terms of imaging, and then of course our primary care physicians and family physicians to help with risk factor modification. No one person, no one team has all the requisite technical and cognitive skills to manage these patients, so we need to work together. So what does a CLI team look like? Well, in our particular institution, it's really more of a virtual team without walls. This is a cooperative team. We communicate on a regular basis through our uh, EMR, a uh, very similar concept to our PERT team for PE. And then there are other places that have a traditional sort of bricks and mortars uh, place where all the members see patients together, much like our colleagues in the structural valve clinic. But the bottom line is, uh, whether it's virtual or bricks and mortar, it's a system approach where you have a team of experts, not just one person. And there are very important and key core principles that we adhere to, namely that this is a we integrated care model where we're all working together on behalf of the patient, and we have to have transparency, we have to have trust, we have to be, have candor with one another, and most importantly, you gotta leave the politics at the door. Uh, we have a, vi a mission and vision statement, and I think that this is uh, a, a great way of crystallizing uh, our culture of excellence and working together as a team. There are, of course, barriers to cooperation, and there's fear of losing money, turf, prestige, referrals, and control over the process. And unfortunately, there are some folks who have really big egos that can tend to get in the way as well. So how did we get started? Well, I was the physician champion and sort of... Uh, uh, strong arm everybody into getting together in a room to discuss the concept. Fortunately, we had a relatively enlightened administration who really was very supportive of the concept of the team approach. And you need them to 
uh, basically provide you with the resources that are invaluable to take care of these patients. You need state-of-the-art labs, endo suites, and hybrid ORs. And as you'll see here, from a technical standpoint, you need all the toys. And that includes all manner of balloons, uh, stents, atherectomy devices, ultrasound, uh, pharmacomechanical thrombolysis devices. And as importantly, you need money. Actually, you need a fair amount of money. You need money for research coordinators, and you need money for a QA database. Now, in our particular case, we use the VQI database, but there are others. But the point is, you need to be able to track your outcomes. And more importantly, CLI uh, doesn't know uh, bankers' hours. So you have to have 24-7 on-call interventionalists and non-invasive ancillary testing uh, at, a, at a moment's notice. So we had a number of challenges when we started our program. Getting buy-in from all the previously competing interests was uh, no small feat. And we had to overcome a lot of the traditional turf battles. And the most important thing is you need to emphasize to your colleague what's in it for them. And we wanted to change that culture from an individual or one group approach to a patient-centered care. And yes, Sometimes that means you have to swallow your pride and admit that there's somebody else in the team who's better at doing something than you are. And you have to be flexible. There are some patients who are going to do better with endo versus open. Um, obviously, in some institutions where everybody is paid or part of the same group, a lot of the compensation uh, obstacles uh, are eliminated. It's important to build trust, particularly early on in the, in the, uh, in the process. We had a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, and I think it's much better to have a face-to-face -face meeting instead of an email where the meaning can be misconstrued. And we started scrubbing together on cases, and we learned a ton from each other, and we had a lot of fun doing it. We all have particular skills that we bring to the table. Another very important way of building camaraderie and getting people together on the same page is clinical research trials. We're fortunately involved in a number of uh, really important trials. Uh, for example, in the BEST CLI trial, the LIFE uh, PVAR uh, AAA study, um, obviously Medi's uh, STOP PAD study. We're also together uh, with TCARS and the Roadster 2 trial. Uh, we have monthly case review and MNN conferences where we basically show the tough cases, we show the good cases, and we talk about how we could have th done, done things better. We cross-train each other's trainees, which is kind of a neat concept. So uh, we have residents and fellows uh, going from one procedural area and also to the clinics as well. And we also have a common cardiovascular value analysis committee. And for once, we team together and gang up on the administrators instead of the other way around. And by agreeing on certain products, we can actually help the hospital save some money. There are other ways to work together. PAD screening programs, for example, Legs for Life, community health fairs and lecture programs. Simulators can be helpful to get everybody's skill set up to a common level. And we also developed common credentialing for peripheral vascular interventions, common order sets for thrombolytics and ECOS, and then we also have a vascular symposium that is represented by all three disciplines where we uh, give lectures to our uh, family practice and primary care physicians and nurse practitioners. We also share in the non-invasive reading, so everybody gets a little piece of that pie. And we have a common uh, quality database. Again, in our particular case, it's VQI. And we periodically, actually quarterly, sit down and re review our numbers and see how we're doing. So in conclusion, CLI is obviously very complex and it requires multiple providers. Uh, no man can do it alone. No person can do it alone. It requires a team approach. These teams have been shown to reduce amputations and salvage limbs. Trust, respect, transparency, and buy-in from all the players is absolutely essential for the team concept to work. And your competitors can become your friends. It's fun and gratifying to work towards a common goal, so I would suggest you give it a try. Thank you very much.